Hey guys, so this is a tips and tricks video for Pro Standard, and this is to help us with card making than adding so much embedded codes like that one on the builder. And this is to able to give us a bigger imagination already on how the layout would look like. For this demonstration, I'll be using the card, my original design here. There's a tutorial available on this channel. You guys can follow that tutorial and probably tweak it a little bit. Anyways, let's get started into the demonstration itself. And I also apologize for so many cuts and sped up clips throughout this video, but it's just me copying the CSS codes and personal preference settings, that's all. I kind of sped up the video so you won't take too much time. Anyways, we're now ready to make the card. Of course, we're gonna add our container first. And of course, we're gonna fix the padding. Make sure the vertical and the horizontal paddings are the same. And if you're gonna use columns, make sure your gutter is the same too. Uh, now there's me reviewing the settings on in the recording. <laughs> Whoops. Anyways, now here's where we go to the mobile settings and make sure that it's not on stack and it is set to default. This would just avoid making it look distorted when you're viewing the card on mobile. Now we're gonna go to the background and change the colors to our desired colors. I'll be following the scheme of the photo that I'll be using in the card demonstration. Sped up the video once more just to avoid consuming time. Now I'll be adding some elements to the card just to have an easier imagination on how the card's output would look like. This is the part we add our embedded code. Make sure to label it just to avoid any confusions when you're making your cards. And always, always remember when you're doing CSS, please always add the style tags or else those won't work. Now I'm gonna get the element ID of the container, which is container 01. And then we're gonna put the greater than then dot wrapper. Now the entire um, ID is ready to go be edited then with you, without you going to use background image co um, commands and such and you don't also need to use um, like the back CSS gradient.io when you're if you're gonna make linear backgrounds now I'm gonna just gonna add some CSS codes to the container itself and I'll show you guys how the output would look like also, for kind of forgot to mention, but when you're doing border radius, make sure to use the REM as the unit, like stated in the recording itself, just so the container would be affected by the code. Because if it's PX or EM, I don't think it would work. Now I'm gonna be saving this card as a template just so we can see the final output on desktop. Now you can see that. The text is of course not yet coded and we can see the container itself is that it's affected by the CSS code that we typed out and pretty much has a short st string of code and without us having super long codes and it's not transparent. We can just have like a brief idea of how the card would look like. Now this is where we'll be using different fonts, importing pro fonts to the card. Now I'll be just copying that font face and the font that I'll be using for this card is going to be Rain Kiss. And you can find that on my resource card or other resource cards. Now I'll be adding some drop shadow CSS code to my the name text which is text 01 by the element id and we're just going to change a few colors of it just to match the theme now i'll be showcasing how to use marks for specific text elements wherein as seen on some of my card designs, I have used multiple mark designs without 
really making so much embedded embedded elements to the card builder itself now i'll just be typing text o to mark and that's pretty much it you just need to type that out just for the marking of the text element and now i'll just be adding my own css code to it now you can see the highlighted text that we have is now a marking that we see on pro cards Next is that I'll be meddling the text element ID itself. I'll just be adding some background like shown on the reference photo that is seen in the beginning and just copying some few settings there. Now the current output is so much cleaner than having so much embedded codes placed on your builder. Now let's focus on to the buttons. Commonly when making cards in Pro Standard, usually we have to code our own buttons like this one, like another embedded I element, and then we're just going to label it buttons, and we're going to have another CSS styling dedicated for it. But this one, completely different. I'm going to be able to teach you guys how to edit cards, buttons without us struggling on another embedded code that we need to do. I'll be fixing first the settings on the card buttons here just to match the reference. While well, adding a few animations to the car to the buttons, um, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go get to our CSS embedded code, and now we're I'm gonna put it on the top so you guys can see. Now we're gonna put the hashtag buttons zero one. That's pretty much the element ID that you can see, and then we'll put li meaning list, and then a as the link. So basically, your button is a listed link, and that's that's basically the code that would affect the buttons that we can use in card. I'll just be adding my own CSS code to there and I'll show you guys what how it will look like on the published version. Okay, so this is kind of like what you're expected to see. I just adjusted the, the spacing just to fit in the container and such. Now you can see the back, the inside shadow was affected with the buttons and you can see there's borders around it in the borders you can use px and such and the corner roundings is affected by card settings itself now you can see it's matching to the reference photo that we have there then making it like look like it's just we have to use text and just put backgrounds and add a little bit hover animations on it so that's pretty much more on the buttons and also the dot wrapper settings that we could do on the containers and also be able to talk, teach you guys how to use multiple markings already for different text element ids before proceeding to media rule i'll show you also guys that um when you're adding a pattern it won't overlap the container itself so here's me adding a pattern to the container that we have and i'll show you guys it in the previewed version Refreshing the page, and there, you see there's a pattern already in the container itself. It's not overlapping. It doesn't look distorted, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to focus on media rule. Media rule is basically the mobile settings that we see there on the container itself or other elements, and it's only available for Pro Plus. And, of course, we can bypass that as Pro Standard users by using media rule. Now to give a sample of it, um, we'll be doing the buttons and let's try to move it downwards. First of all, get the code for the media rule. You can find this in w3schools.com, just search media rule and let's put it under our CSS tags. Make sure it's in between the style tags too. Now we added the media rule, let's remove the body code and let's just get the buttons element ID. and. I'll be using relative positioning since I'll just be pushing the buttons downward. Um, and when you're doing relative positioning or absolute positioning, make, always know if you're trying to push to a specific direction, always input the opposite direction. So I place top as the positioning and on the output, of course, it would look normal when I refresh it is it looks normal because we're not using a mobile device and of course 
you can check it on your mobile device on how it looks like but if you do not have any mobile device with you you can use this website called responsinator this is just for us to see how the card would look like on mobile and i just copied the link of the template and there you go you can see that the buttons were pushed down below there make sure to also fix the mobile settings of your buttons when publishing it with media rule you don't need to you keep repeating the code like the at media something something like that you don't need to repeat that you can just insert the text element id between those things there now i'll be doing the text o2 the one where it says links and such i'll be demonstrating it to you guys that it would still work without you repetitively copying and pasting the at media only screen code now i'll be using relative positioning also and i'll be pushing it downwards also so so i'll be using the top code so when i refresh the code uh the link on my desktop it's still working perfectly but when i refresh it on the responsinator you can see it actually went downward so that's pretty much about media ruling of course, you can fix the width, height, the font size of specific text elements, and many more with Media Rule so it can display perfectly on your mobile device. Now, that's pretty much it about Media Rule. I just only wanted to demonstrate the absolute positioning because that one has a big impact when we're making cards on Pro Standard. Now, I hope you guys are being able to learn something from this video. Sorry for so many cuts and sped up videos because it's really time consuming with what i did but overall i hope you guys would have an easier card making experience than having so much embedded elements onto the card builder itself and you'll be able to imagine how the card would be able to look like even though it just looks a little bit plain on the builder itself